Hello, BookTube. This is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred. So I was on BookTube the other day, and I saw Steve Donahue do the book acquiring tag. And it was really fun. I really enjoyed his answers. And he tagged everyone. So I am going to be doing this tag. This tag was originally created by Enter the Book, and I will leave a link to her channel down below. And it is a series of 11 questions, and they sounded really good. So let's get started. Question number one. Do you plan your book purchases ahead or impulse buy? Actually, you know what? It's a combination of both. So when I'm looking for nonfiction books, I will go online and I will read all of the reviews for a specific book I'm interested in. And... Um, I'll make an educated decision based on those reviews and based on how I feel the book is going to be. In terms of impulse purchases, I do occasionally purchase a book on impulse. If I'm at the local used bookstore and I see a book that I like that sounds good, I will pick it up. And uh, yeah, that's about it. But for the most part, if I'm purchasing online, I will thoroughly review the book. Well, I'll thoroughly review the uh, review the reviews. I will look through the reviews of the book and see what other people have to say about the book. Question number three, what is your philosophy on where you shop? Online versus in-person, large versus small, physical, digital, or audio, new versus used. I tend to do more of my shopping online now in terms of books. I do enjoy being able to read the reviews and getting a better sense of the book. In terms of large versus small, I tend to uh, gravitate towards larger science textbooks, um, but in terms of nonfiction or uh, fictional novels, I tend towards the three to 500 pages of uh, books. Physical, digital, or audio? Well, that's a great question. So I usually buy a lot of physical books if I plan on keeping them for years to come and I, I like how they look in my office, or if it's one of those books that you can't get digitally. I am moving towards a digital library, however. I like the fact that I can store hundreds or thousands of books on my Kobo or my Kindle, and that I can pick it up at any time and bring it with me anywhere. In terms of audio, I did try an audiobook uh, last month, and I'm not a fan. I'm sorry, I, um, I can't stay focused. Uh, people talk about how they're able to work out or uh, do run errands as they're listening to audiobooks and I've tried that and I can't I can't concentrate on the book I'm focused on what I'm doing so unfortunately unless I'm sitting down and listening to the book and devoting my full attention to the audiobook I'm not able to read it up or listen to it I'm not able to pay attention to it so I don't do a lot of audiobooks oh here's a good one in terms of new and used I do prefer buying used books. Actually, you know what? I think maybe 60 to 70% of my library are used books. Okay. And the fact that I buy a lot of interesting, um, you know, not commonplace books lends towards the used book purchases because you don't, you don't find these new anymore. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if I can pick up a book in like new condition for a fraction of the price of the new book, I'll pick it up. Um, I don't mind if it's been read before. Uh, so long as it's in really good condition, I don't mind at all. Okay, what do we have here? Question number four. What about little free libraries? What do you think about them? Have you used one? Why or why not? I have not used a little free library, but I love the idea of little free libraries. I wish I had a few around in my area. Unfortunately, I live out in the country and uh, the houses are pretty far apart and there really isn't any little free libraries around here. But I, I love the idea that, you know, people can go and pick up a book that interests them or drop off a book that uh, they finished reading. I know I have a number of books that uh, I would like to donate. Um, yeah, so maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll drive around the city and uh, drop off a couple books if I see those little free libraries. Question number five. Oh, I should look at the camera. Question number five. How do you feel after acquiring a book? Do you share like a, in a book haul or a diary? So before BookTube, I really didn't share any of my book purchases with anyone because 
you know, nobody's really into the books that I read. But uh, now that I'm on BookTube, I do enjoy doing uh, little book hauls and uh, talking about the books that I've read and that I've picked up. I, I guess that's it. There's not much more to that uh, question. Question number six. How do you feel looking at your books that haven't been read? Does it matter if it's currently a lot or a little amount? It does matter. Uh, I don't like having a large TBR pile. Uh, I like making sure that uh, my TBR pile stays between five to ten books. And, you know, for some people that's a lot. But for me, uh, that's a good amount. Um, to make sure that, uh, you know, it gives me a reason not to go out and buy another book because I know that I've got a number of books that still have to be read. So I do enjoy a smaller TBR pile. How do I feel about looking at my TBR pile? It's not a big deal. I uh, categorize my books by genre and I put all the similar books together. I'm hoping that I'm not forgetting any of these books. Oh, uh, wow. Okay, so I still have to read The Amateur Naturalist. I still have to read Wild Animals of North America. And I still have to read Animal Behavior. <laughs> okay, I got a lot of books I still have to read. Question number seven. How do you decide what number of unread books is the right amount? I don't. Uh, you know, if, uh, God, if I had a hundred unread books, that would definitely bother me. Um, I probably have maybe 10 unread books that uh, I've got to get to. And it's actually good. I mean, I don't want to keep on buying books and not reading them. Um, so I try to keep my TBR down to a reasonable amount and I will stay disciplined and not purchase new books until I've read a couple that I've, uh, still need to read. And, uh, yeah, that's it for that one. Question number eight. Do you have a TBR game or process for reading them? Do I have a TBR game? Nope. I'm a mood reader. Uh, I will pick up a book and read it based on how I'm feeling. And recently with BookTube, I've been taking part in a number of reading events. So that's helped me focus on certain genres. But in terms of my own personal reading preferences, uh, books on science or ancient history, I'll pick it up when I feel like it and I'll read it. Question number nine. Do you have a book buying problem? If so, what is the nature of it? And can it be adjusted? I don't have a book buying problem, but I do get the urge to purchase books um, when I've gone online and I've seen some good reviews of them. So, for example, I don't want to sound like a nerd. Ah, whatever. Okay, so for example, I wanted to buy a book on microbiology. And I don't need the book. I mean, I have two biology textbooks that go into microbiology, and those two books go into enough information where I don't need another book on microbiology. But this looked like a really good book. It was Microbiology, a Systems Approach, and I really wanted to pick it up. But uh, I didn't. Uh, so no, I don't have a book buying problem. I do go online and uh, I do enjoy reading reviews of books that I know I'm not going to buy. But I think I'm okay. Question number 10. Tag two or three others to ponder their book buying processes. All right, I'm going to enjoy this. So I'm going to tag Rosie Cockshut, and uh, she has an amazing channel. And I really want to know what her book buying process is. Um, I always enjoy watching her videos. Uh, she's very optimistic and uh, very happy, and it's a joy to watch her videos. I'm also going to tag Michael Romeo Talks Books. Uh, he's a recent uh, new booktuber, and he's got some great videos as well. And it would be interesting to see how he acquires his books. And finally, I'm going to tag Miss Danielle. And Miss Danielle is a librarian. And uh, she has some of the funniest videos I've seen. It's Weird Book Showcase. And if you've not seen her videos, please go check her out. These are hilarious. Uh, she's got some of the weirdest books that come into her library. And, uh, you know, she does a couple of reviews and they're just funny. Anyways, I'll link to all three down below. I'd like to hear her uh, book buying process as well. I'll link to all three channels down below. 
uh, please check them out. And I do hope that they do this tag. Oh, and there's one more. Question number 11. No, you are awesome just as you are. Being a book lover is amazing. Well, thank you. And I'd like to say anybody watching this, you are also awesome. And if you are a book lover, thank you for being a book lover. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. This was a fun tag to do. This is Fred, and you're watching Read by Fred. And finally, I'm going to attempt... I'm going to... <laughs> Question number 10. Oh, good. Te te to be honest with you, it's, it's almost imposing. It's um, not imposing. That's a bad word. It's almost... Not frightful. Ah, uh, let's skip that. And it's a book on... Okay, let's start that again. In terms of impulse purchases, I do occasionally do... So before Booktube, uh, sometimes it's a, not as accurate as I... Excuse me. Question number one. Oh, I'll look at the camera when I say that. Question number one. <laughs> I don't have a book buying problem. Maybe. <laughs>